everybody. It's Tyler here at Chessie Champs, checking in team number 8033, Highlander Robotics. Uh, definitely one of the big up-and-coming teams here in first two regional finalists this year. Uh, and went down to the lower bracket finals in their division this year as well, too. So congratulations on a great performance this year. Highlander Robotics, overall, just a very well-packaged machine. We'll be going through a lot of the aspects of it, running from a couple things doing with their uh, dry base, uh, all the way through that uh, Cuban Cone journey. So, of course, the uh, intake, their transfer area, elevator, and some cool stuff they're doing in programming. Let's learn more about Highlander Robotics coming up here on Behind the Bumper. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Peter, let's start talking about your uh, dry train on here. I'd uh, love to hear just a couple things that you want to show to the first community that maybe uh, make your team a little bit unique in that aspect, and we'll show it off on camera here. Yeah, so last year we had a really small drive train. It was a 24 by 24. This year we opted for a bit larger, 27 by 27. We've got the Mark IV I swerve modules. We got these nice covers. Last year we had some problems with dust, so that really helped us keep these clean. Um, with the superstructure, we have a square frame, but then we have these um, CNC uh, uh, bumper clips, so these help keep the bumpers on, and then we have these gussets that are also CNC to help keep the superstructure and the elevator attached. When you were uh, from a approaching the game out here um, from a robustness standpoint, have you noticed by adding those, like your frame's been in really good shape this year? Yeah, definitely. At the end of Worlds, we had some issues with our uh, frame strength, especially last year also, so we definitely took that into account when designing it this year. Yeah. Asha, let's talk about the uh, intake as we start off on the robot here. Uh, anything, of course, we can demo and show off as well, too, would be great. Uh, talking about how you came up with this and any yeah. iterations you yeah. came up with, too. So basically, this intake was actually an iteration off of our 2022 season robot, sure. Selkie. And basically, over here, we have its pneumatic actuated. So basically, when the pneumatics are in, the intake is out. Um, it's a four bar intake, so we have the compliant wheels here, sucks it in, and then we have vector wheels that vector it towards the middle and it goes into our routing system. Looking at uh, from your intake, you said that you took inspiration from 2022. Yeah. Is, did you make any major changes to it from last year's robot? Yeah, I can talk a bit about that. So um, we learned a lot in 2022, a lot of stuff, especially about pneumatics. Um, we had a, a lot of bent cylinders and um, I kind of thought, hey, if we make pneumatics short, it'll be fine, uh, but it was not fine. So what we did this year is uh, the pneumatic essentially is actually closed when the intake is open, because if someone can extend it. Uh, so you can see when this is out, the pneumatic is in uh, and vice versa. So that has been a, a lot more robust. Um, we've switched to aluminum for this, kind of get that more, uh, more rigid kind of thing going on. And then also we're using these pulleys. Uh, these are Mark Forge and they have these really oversized flanges. So uh, no more belts falling off. And uh, yeah, overall the intake's been a super reliable subsystem. It really goes to show the power of, of iterating on old years. For yeah, sure. love it overall with that. Let's send it to your elevator, send it back to Peter, who's going to be talking uh, how the system works. Uh, we'll see how high up we can get uh, with your fit as well, too, but love to just hear more about uh, the overall structure uh, that's gone into it. Yeah, so this year we have a WCP three-stage elevator. One of the really interesting things is because it's three stages, we had to have two cable tracks. So we have these uh, nice guards that keep the cable tracks in place. Um, also, we have a limit switch at the bottom to zero it, and we have some rubber pads because when this thing is moving, it can get very loud and it slamming into the bottom was not great for our integrity. Um, it's powered by two Falcons and it overall is very fast. And it's also adjustable for can do L3 and L2, cones and cubes. Did you, uh, from your side, did you make any major modifications from it or mostly COTS? Not really. Most of this is COTS parts, but we did CNC all of our tubes just because these are really mainly meant to run up and down in a linear fashion. So we ran into some issues with uh, the bearings running on a, horse, um, on a slant, but we got it all working. Cool. Vaughn, uh, talking about this uh, transfer area you have, I think called the grabber area on this. Uh, love to just hear how that's been working out uh, for you. And then, uh, you know, when you look at having multiple touch points, potentially, there's always a potential for errors or something like that. But it seems like on the field, your team's been, uh, it's just been a very smooth process for you. Yeah, for sure. So this grabber is the second iteration. Uh, it's a completely new design. Uh, we changed it after our week two regional at Central Valley. 
And um, the reason why was because our Central Valley gripper, which was kind of a claw style, was pneumatic, uh, was not particularly reliable with cones. So what we did is we looked at Madtown, we looked at Robonauts, um, and we kind of combined them. So we have a coaxial wrist here, and this is, this is kind of our sauce because it allows us to pick up from the single substation. So when we extend our, our intake out to collect uh, from the single sub, yeah, uh, this is right at the level of the chute. And that cycle is much shorter, much faster. And then when we want to score, it tilts down to score. Um, so it holds a cone just like this, and then uh, inside the robot it tilts back a little bit, and we go to score, it tilts down. Um, just like that. And then of course, just like Robonauts, we can grip a cube between the bottom roller and the bottom, just like that. And uh, overall this gripper has been a lot more reliable and a lot more kind of robust and also versatile. It's allowed us to do a lot more uh, and be a lot quicker. So uh, yeah. Louis, I got to ask you, uh, programming-wise, uh, as you've gone through on this, uh, you're doing some cool uh, custom work in regards to how you're approaching uh, visualizing your robot on the field. Uh, so let's take a look at your computer and tell me a little bit more what you're doing. Yeah, so going into the season, one of our philosophies with controls was to always make as much on one controller as possible so we don't risk our drivers miscommunicating or having to really time things with e between each other. Uh, so almost all of our controls are on one controller. The only major thing that isn't is selecting what level we're scoring on, which can be done at any point in the cycle. Uh, for this offseason specifically, we've been doing a lot of work to really up our software game. Over here, we can see a log that we took with Advantage Kit of a practice match from yesterday. Uh, and you can see we've got our odometry playing back here. Uh, we also have been taking advantage of simulation. Uh, so here we can see a simulated version of our robot that we can drive around and test things without having the robot. Since we found that the limitation of only having the one robot and only having a couple of weeks in build season really limited uh, how much we could do and how many hands we could get on the robot. So we've been using that simulation for training. Uh, and it's been working out for us really well. We're also running this new path planning system. Uh, you've probably heard a lot about Path Planner, which uses splines to generate autonomous paths. This is called Choreo. Instead of using splines, it does Trajop. So it finds the optimal uh, trajectory for a set of waypoints over time, which lets us have these really nice and smooth autonomous paths that are uh, really quick and uh, really reliable compared to what we found using Path Planner. Is this something that uh, other teams can uh, find and utilize as well, too? Uh, I believe it's currently um, not super public. There's a CD post that's coming out sometime soon. Uh, it's still er relatively early in development, so there is some kinks to work out. But it it's definitely worked out well for us, and it should be ready before the season. Awesome. Well, 8033 Highland Robotics, uh, like I said, definitely a team to keep an eye on. Not just here at Chessie Chance, but I'm very excited to see what you all bring for the 2024 season as well in Crescendo. So keep an eye out for them. Good luck here, and uh, thanks for taking the time, everybody. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check out our social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.